I decided to change into something a little more breezy because it's still hot. What is up my literary fans and gents? It is your girl Deja and I am back with a brand new video on my channel. So this is part two to my mid-year wrap-up. So you guys already know what this is. If you guys didn't watch part one, I'll throw it up on the screen in one of these corners. I think it's this corner up here and you guys can go watch that. But without further ado, let's just jump straight into this. So the first book we're going to be talking about is All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brandon Kiley. Keely? Kiley. You guys know I don't do names. I really don't. I think it's Keely. It might be Kiley, but I might be wrong on both of those. I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I thought this book was great. This book delved into a lot of different things that I feel like um, The Hate You Give and Long Way Down did not discuss. You get the perspective of somebody who was a police officer, somebody who is an African American and was a police officer, um, how he relates his job with his son. Uh, you get the perspective from somebody who knows the police officer who assaulted this young man and kind of how they deal with it. And then you can kind of see how people differ on ideals um, based on race and sometimes how the ideals are the same regardless of the fact that they are of different races. So this, I, the fact that this was like a dual personality novel, I thought that it was very well done. I enjoyed, like I said, looking at the two different sides and seeing how these two different people were looking at the same situation and kind of how they came to their own conclusions at the end. So this novel follows Rashad who accidentally gets confused for shoplifting at this store and this police officer um, proceeds to beat him um, and hospitalize him. And then this young man named Quinn whose best friend older brother is a police officer witnesses this. And you get to follow both of their journeys uh, throughout this process of healing, how it kind of, you know, causes a little bit of an uprising and chaos in their community and not just in that but at their school as well. How to, who you can trust, who's really your friend, who and you, it's there's just a lot of things this book is really about like relationships and it's about perspective those are the two main points that i think this book touches on and i think it does a really good job of that i thought that this book was really well done definitely recommend it it was a great read um it's just pick it up read it tell me what you think because i thought it was fantastic i don't know about you but i think it's great so the next book is Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. I gave this book 3.75 out of 5 stars and I've never given a book a rating like that. I usually try to stick to 5, um, 0.5 increments. But I thought that this, I was like, this book is better than a 3.5, but it's not a 4 star. So I was just like, I'm going to break my rule just this once. And I gave this book 3.75 out of 5 stars. So this book follows an African American young adult named Alice, who has just broken up with her girlfriend because she had to tell her that she was asexual. So after the breakup with her girlfriend, she decides to move in with her best friend Feeney and Ryan, who are engaged to get married. And then it seems like her summer is just going to be, you know, one of just crying over her lost relationship with her past girlfriend until the bookstore that she works at gets a new employee named Takumi. And Takumi is a tall glass of water thirst quench. And Alice has a reaction that she has never had before and she has to reconsider. She's just like, what is this feeling that I'm feeling when I look at this guy? So I thought that this book was a really great representation of asexuality in terms of me myself. Um, I really related to some of the issues that she had and some of the problems that she had in terms of relationships. I love the fact that she went to go see a therapist and it wasn't seen as like this daunting thing where she's going to be like psychoanalyzed but she just went and she talked and the therapist he was super cool. I thought that that was just like a great concept for them to throw in there. For me this book lost a lot of like points is because of uh, Feeny and because of Talk to Me. Talk to Me, I've already told you guys before, I do not like perfect reactionist characters. I let my characters be realistic and I feel like he was perfect this entire book. Yeah, there's like a part at the end where he's just like, I feel like you expect me to always have the right response and I'm just like, you do. The relationships in this book, while they were 
most for the most part healthy relationships I felt like they could have been flushed out more and then the ones that didn't or, or and then the ones that were problematic didn't get resolved so I had issues with that and then some other things that were thrown in here like there was like a sexual harassment scene that was just kind of like dumped and never brought up later in the book and I was just like why that was like a huge issue and like like a major kind of like plot push for the rest of the book so I did do a review on this. If you guys want to go watch it, I went a lot more in-depth to the things that I found problematic and that could have been fixed. And like I said, the, the asexual representation of this book was spot on. It was just like everything else that I thought ha had issues with. So if you are somebody who has never read a book with an asexual or a black asexual character, I definitely recommend this. This was great. I did enjoy it. I think I've read this book like three times because it is fluffy. It's a fluffy book. It's a problematic fluffy book, but it's fluffy and I like fluffy things, so sue me. The next book I read was Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. This was the Hot Mess Book Club um, pick for the month of February and I gave this book five out of five stars. Before I read this book, it had been a good long while to, since I had last shipped two characters so hard that it caused me to cry. And I ship Wesper. I will go down with that ship. I ship Kanej. I All the couples in this book were just these characters were so great. This is my first Leigh Bardugo book and a lot of people say that she is a master at um, showing not telling and she absolutely is. Like, like I t when I tell you that I enjoyed this book so much, it was so, 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 so good. So this book follows a teenage Kaz and Kaz is kind of like this gangster in this fantasy world and he has an assassin named Anej and he has his own team of like sharpshooters and whiz brains and brute strength and healers and they basically go on a heist. That is the plot of this whole book is this gigantic heist but there is so much more to this first of all Kaz is like brutal but he's a great kind of brutal that I semi approve of there are times when he's a little extra but at the same time I approve of it for me there was not necessarily anything like moral that I could discuss about this book it wasn't so much that like oh I walked away from this book thinking something better about myself or I walked away from this book with a better understanding of life this was just like a purely fantastic book to read to kind of just drown yourself out from like the outside world it was a great world the, the world was built wonderfully the characters have been delved into the plot was it was simple but at the same time there were so many things going on that it did not seem overwhelming at all and it just highlighted all the subplots that were going on even the first chapter threw me I was hooked from the first chapter like I was I was like if you read the book you know what I mean the first chapter threw me I was like what and people tell me that the second book is even better and I'm not even ready I'm not I, mm -mm, I'm not ready at all. The next book that I picked up was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This was the Hot Mess Book Club pick for the month of March. I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. Again, this book was on the same caliber, almost on the same caliber as Sister Crows. This book wasn't something that you come away with like some type of moral high ground or where you come away thinking better about life or you've had some type of epiphany or this awakening of some sort and you become woke. It's just a purely great book to read where you're like on the edge of your seat and you think you know where some things are going but then it's just like nope plot twist. I will say that for um for the most part there were a lot of things that I knew were going to happen before it actually happened. Like, you knew who the real bad guy was. You knew who the guy who was pretending to be bad but was actually good. Did I necessarily like how this book ended? Not really. I did enjoy this book. This, um, too, was my very first Holly Black book. A lot of people are like, she's the queen of fae. And I totally believe that because all of the fairies in this book are cruel. Like, even if they don't mean to be and they think they're being nice, they're still cruel. And I'm just like, that's even worse. If you, if you think that you're being nice, but you're still being a jerk, what? So yes, I did enjoy this book. I am excited to read the second one. When the, I think it's called like The Wicked Deep and it comes out this year. So I'm excited for that. I saw the cover for it and I was just like, ooh, 
that looked good. So this book follows the story of Jude and her two sisters and how they get kidnapped after their parents are murdered by this guy to the fairy world. And you come to find out that Jude's older sister is actually part Faye and her mom is human while Jude and her twin sister are just 100% human. And so things ensue. They both have to learn how to navigate this world where these creatures have these abilities and dominion over humans. If they eat certain things, if they drink certain things, they can put them under their spells. They're cruel. They lie and everything is about politics. And so you kind of get to see her find her place and use her ability as a human to lie to kind of uncover this great conspiracy that turns out to be a conspiracy of itself. And things just end up kind of, you know, just... I would recommend that you pick up this book and then pick up The Wicked Deep when it comes out. Um, I think that comes out this year. I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure it comes out this year. I hope it comes out this year. Yeah, it comes out this year. I'm thinking of something else. Anyways, whoop. The next book is Love, Hate, and Other Filters by Samira Ahmed. This was the Hamas Book Club pick for the month of April. I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. So this book follows high schooler Maya Aziz, and she is a Muslim American, and kind of how she is navigating her life as a high schooler with aspirations not to be, you know, what her parents traditionally want her to be. She wants to go into video and filmmaking. But when a terror terrorist attack happens and the suspect or the prime suspect has the same last name as her, she has to deal with a lot of Islamophobia and how it kind of tests her relationships with some people and how it strengthens relationships with others. I thought that this book handled the topic of Islamophobia very well. I'm not Muslim at all, but I am no, like, spring chicken when it comes to dealing with prejudice or when it comes to, like, dealing with racism. Unfortunately, it happens, and I thought that this book handled that very, very well. I loved the twist towards the middle of the book. I was just like, I was like, ooh, that's what y'all get. Yeah. Again, the problem that I have with this book and the reason that it got 4 out of 5 stars was, again, perfect reactionist characters. The guy that she ends up with, I forget his name, and then the guy that she was dating, how they are both, they, they're perfect, right? I know that they have, like, they like, oh, like, oh, I'm busy right now, but it's just like, oh, we can still talk, even though, like, you know... I don't know. I just had issues with them because I just thought that they were portrayed as being like perfect. They were always there um, for the most part when she needed them. They knew exactly what to say. They knew exactly what to do. They knew where she would be at when they needed her. And I was just kind of like, people aren't like that in real life. And I hate that. I know I've said that so many times before, but that is just like a pet peeve of mine. It's just like, make your characters realistic. They can be busy. Even though you're at a stressful time in your life, you can be busy, okay? I realize that as friends, it's just like, oh, you drop everything and come help me. But sometimes that's just, you can't do that because we grew up and we become adults and we have lives and responsibilities and stuff. But at this point, I'm just ranting. So let me reel it back in. I do recommend that you guys read this book because it was good. I did enjoy it. I thought that there was a great message behind this um, when it comes to prejudice, when it comes to how people jump to conclusions and how they don't even accept the fact that they were wrong if they are wrong or even if they are right how you can't just blanket everybody um every person in a group or in a category because of the actions of one person and the last book is actually a ebook that i got from a website to review i forgot what website it was i did end up doing the review but I totally forgot what the website was. And since this is an ebook and I don't feel like don't get the picture, I'm just gonna show you the cover. It is Souls for Sale by Asta Idonia, Idonia. I'm not even sure how you pronounce that, but mm, look at that cover, it's cool. So this book is what I like to call literary fan fiction, which is like what I believe is like a type of fan fiction story, but written as a book. I thought that this book was great. I gave this book 3.5, 3.5? So this um, book follows Saul. Saul is a demon and his job is to go to the surface world to make contracts with people usually for money but mostly about sex and then after that to collect their souls 
for help. And one day he runs into Tom who is a comic book artist and Tom has been pining after this guy that he's 99.9% sure is straight. So when Saul walks by and offers him a night like he would never ever dream of, Tom says yes. So after spending this wonderful night where they make love copious amounts of time, Tom is just like, I'm ready. But Saul has started to develop feelings, but he's like, it's not possible for demons to love. So like, what's going on? And he does not want to collect Tom's soul. So he grabs Tom and they go on the run. Hell wants him because he has signed a contract with Saul, but they also believe that Tom might be a Nephilim, which is the offspring of an angel and a human, and heaven says that they have claim over him. But who has more claim over Tom than Saul himself? This book was just pure enjoyment. There was there was a good there was a plot. It was totally cliche. You absolutely knew how it was going to end, like probably before the book even started. But it was enjoyable. The way the story was told was really great. I kind of liked how Tom and um, Saul's relationship developed. I liked the ending, how everything kind of concluded. Like I said, you knew what was going to happen. You didn't know how it was going to happen, which is what made the story even more interesting. But overall, I did enjoy it. Um, have I read it more than once? I think so. I think I've read it twice at this point and I've had this book for I think quite a while. I did enjoy it. If this is not something that's up your lane, like if the concept of like, you know, demons, heaven, hell, or um, anything like that is not necessarily up your lane, then I don't recommend that you read this. But if you just like some pure, like, you know, relationship going on with some paranormal stuff thrown in there, then I absolutely recommend that you go and you buy this ebook because it was worth it. It was great. Um, I will say that there's a warning because there is some explicit sexual content in this book because it is an adult book. So that is all I have for you guys. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more of this visage, you can hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching my video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!